Hi guys, welcome back again. Uh, this is the eighth part of this uh, demo tutorial series. And um, as I mentioned, uh, I'm going to continue sculpting on here just a little bit. And uh, basically, I'm still working on the chest section. Uh, last, uh, I, in the last video, I, I took a step backwards and decided to do something a little bit more character driven. And so this time around, uh, I'm doing part of a bust. And probably since since working on this, uh, I actually went back and probably sculpted out uh, some parts of legs and arms. So uh, I will probably uh, continue on and probably post in ZBC and uh, see where this uh, sculpt becomes because I actually like it. And it worked really nicely for a line art sample, which I'm going to get to here shortly. But uh, as you can see, I just uh, tighten up some details and I'm figuring out trying to add a few more uh, kit bash parts and you know, uh, adding a few other kit bash parts uh, using the move tool to move some of those things around, make them, making them fit into my design. Uh, these are you know, sort of uh, details that I put in after I've already worked out uh, you know, a lot of the form language uh, in the silhouette. And so once I have a silhouette that's pretty solid, then I move in and try to add, you know, surface details and surface noise, uh, you know, by using a insert meshes or something like that. So uh, I've added my shader once again, uh, same test matte cap uh, for inking. And uh, I think probably after this, I'm going to actually save the matte cap uh, as a final cap to use in the future. But uh, there's going to be two different ways uh, for this first treatment where, of course, I'm using it uh, as line art here. I'm doing setting up some lighting in a BPR so that I can uh, actually uh, use this as line art. And if you notice, uh, probably in the render, render settings, uh, I believe it's the 3D posterized settings, the more you crank it up, probably the more some of those shadows are going to come, uh, like the, the shadow areas where there are heavy black fills are probably going to be a little bit more prominent uh, throughout uh, the surface of the, the line art. And so, you know, where uh, there's less light, there's probably going to be a larger black fill. And sometimes where there are shadows, they're going to be uh, sort of, you know, the shader seems to pick up some, some shadows and, and actually make a nice little sort of cross hatching uh, within that. And so it, it very much looks like ink shadowing or something like that. And if I run levels uh, in Photoshop and clean up the line art, when I crank up the le le levels, it actually kicks out all, everything that's much lighter and leaves only the strongest lines. Uh, and therefore, I can sort of carry over, uh, you know, just a very clean, uh, almost smoothed over uh, curve type line, uh, which is really nice because uh, once I bitmap it, only the most readable information comes forward and it looks pretty much indistinguishable to, to my own drawn hand. You know, like if I, 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 as you saw me at the beginning of this series, I was working on a, a demo of something, a piece of art that was literally on paper. And uh, although that had n not as much to do with this series, uh, you know, it's it's a good sampling of what you know I might draw if I was drawing in, in pen and ink uh, versus uh, digital pen and ink. And I think uh, digital, in a lot of ways, seems to get a little bit more finite because you have more pixels, and more resolutions to work with, uh, versus uh, the resolutions that you might get on paper, uh, unless you you're insanely detailed. And then the, that 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 is possible, but for what it's worth. Uh, there always seems to be a, a slightly different uh, look to the two, although uh, you know you can always strive to to get those two looks uh, you know a little bit more consistent. So I'm running levels, and as you can see here in Photoshop, uh, I've already done my my BPR, saved it out, uh, brought it into uh, Photoshop, uh, and masked it off, and I'm just giving you a show of. Uh, where the line art got cleaned up. And when I zoom in, it, it, all of the lines look stepped. Um, I'm flipping through some masking so that uh, I can mask off uh, the, the actual uh, character from the background and then do a, a separate uh, action set so that I can mask off uh, everything, like the line, and so that I can fill that line and it's all, all of its fills on a separate transparent layer. And this is best so that, like, say, if I wasn't doing uh, black and white work, I would be colorizing this, and I can go underneath it and actually start to work in flats, uh, and then, you know, with flats, start to give it a little bit more of a rendered look. So something like this, where now that I have it on transparent, you know, like a, a transparent layer, uh, all of the black are 
you know, fills are 100% black and I can come in with a brush and just do a little fill and it's kind of just, you know, uh, not, not necessarily paint by numbers, but with the same ease, I can just come in and, uh, you know, fill in the figure and uh, start to add some other values to flush it out and, and give it some depth. I think I made it lighter uh, and added a gradation on another layer that uh, was just a single gradation on a transparent layer. And uh, I just did this to give it a, a sort of a dramatic look. And uh, I've saved out uh, some of these images, so I hope to share some of the PSD files so that you guys can have a look and see how exactly they were built. So I'm going back to my tone file here and same rule applies. I'm going to use the clone brush and I've docked the file over to the side uh, with CS or excuse me, I believe with CS and CC, more importantly, the most recent versions of uh, Photoshop CC, it allows you to dock uh, separate documents uh, over to the side. If you actually bring it to the, the far right hand side or far left hand side, you can probably dock it. And, you know, just to make this a little bit more organized so that I can tell what I'm sampling from or flip the document, I can tap on the tab for my tone file and go through its layers and pick a different tone, sample it with the clone brush, come and then apply that uh, to my line art uh, on a separate layer. And I just make a new layer and label it tone and start doing some fills. Uh, after I've done the fills, um, Generally what I'll do is I'll try to come in and, and use the eraser tool and sort of scratch in some, some post uh, uh, contrast pieces. So in this next video I'm going to probably finish this look and start in on another one. I did mention that I was going to try to take a different uh, graphic approach to this. So um, stay tuned. Thank you.